Yeah, I know it should have been Ultra Magnus for the third part of that joke, but I don't have one ready for review at the moment, so we're going to be looking at Animated Snarl instead. An interesting toy in a few reasons, for one in particular, but we're also going to discuss the interesting part about the naming scheme of this guy. See, apparently, they originally wanted to call him Slag, just like the G1 character, and even in planning stages, that was the goal. Except they decided at the last minute that uh, that's not really a cool term to use in the UK anymore, and I inevitably have to apologize to my UK audience. Uh, so yeah, it's an offensive term over there, and they decided that would probably hurt sales, so we better change the name. Well, the UK showed you, Hasbro. They didn't buy it anyway. This thing shelf-warmed for a long time. But hey, it didn't do too badly over here, so... Let's take a look at what some in the UK may have missed out on by uh, trying to avoid the potentially offensive name. We have a Triceratops done up in the animated style, which means not a whole lot of molded detail in the exterior, but very, very smooth and organic lines all around to create a more cartoonish appearance. It's done in an interesting kind of slate blue color scheme. This was back when Hasbro, and these still are, but even more to the point, did not want to release any toys of the same color. So even though they did three Dinobots, they couldn't all be the same shades of gray and red. So this guy just, I don't know. You roll the dice and he's the one who ends up coming up a little bit blue. But hey, it still doesn't look bad. And he still has the gold and the red of the G1 character. And thus he still matches close enough to your traditional Dinobot to be cool enough. He does have some nice detailing going on in spite of the animated's cartoony appearance, mostly in the head. Three-horn design, of course, absolute must for Triceratops. Done in a, almost a translucent. It's just barely, it's just barely translucent to it. Kind of creates a little bit of an Energon glow effect. Looks cool. Actually, what are we talking about? The paintwork on the head is not to be outdone, though. You have a lot of gold around the face and little black lines left over, giving it a nice detail and bright blue eyes in there. Very cool. Uh, Autobot Sigil, I wish was a little bit stronger. Then again, he never was officially an Autobot in the show, so I guess that's almost appropriate in a strange sense. What I like is this piece, and I know someone who knows dinosaurs better than I is going to object to me calling it a frill, but that's what it looks like. So... Along this, you see some me uh, mechanical detailing, which is actually neat. Little circuitry lines going through, and I like circuitry detail on these things. Well, I like circuitry detail in general, but here it creates a nice effect, not only to give it a little bit of a veiny look, but to put a little robotic spin on it. What I like the most is that this whole thing is painted in the slate blue because the whole head itself is primarily painted, or is uh, primarily molded in the red plastic which gives it this neat red trim all the way around. I like the effect of it. It might be unintentional, but it actually does kind of look really cool. Uh, beyond that, we have some red and black details across the tops of the hips, as well as big gold tail, which is very much in line to the G1 Dinobots, as well as gold claws and such. And I like the stature overall of this guy. He's got this big, dumpy appearance, but that's very appropriate. He looks very powerful, and... Nice thing about the animated toys is how clean they are all the way around. Hard pressed to find robot mode details poking out, though. He does have a little bit of Energon Ironhide thing going on. So, that all said and done, it is an exceptionally cool dino mode with a mouth that can open and close at your whim, which is nice. Also, a little bit of articulation going on in the legs. Most of it's to the back legs, which doesn't give you a whole lot of posability. Not a whole lot you can do with the front legs, unfortunately, because they're kind of bent up in a weird way for transformation. So it's not the most articulative beasts, but hey, articulation is what robot modes are for. So we're going to go into that. And this one, I'm going to have to be very, very careful. It is This one is rather infamous for having a really strange element to its transformation that the instructions do not get right. So I have to be a little bit careful and a little bit cautious when actually uh, reviewing this toy and make sure that I get this part right. Because I know I uh, I have a little bit of infamy for not 
getting uh, transformations exactly right sometimes. So we're going to double hinge this whole red section down, splitting it in half. That creates a, hang on, really tight double hinges. And that creates the wider stance that we need for his robot mode torso. With those pieces out of the way, that frees up the legs in front, which, uh, which we have to angle forward in order to, uh, come on, cooperate with me. There we go. To get those out. Those go to the back for now. You can close them up here to add his butt, but unfortunately, the tabs for it are very loose. They do not hold together. This has been a constant problem on this toy. So that's rather unfortunate. We're going to have to do, deal with that throughout the review. All right, so we'll go ahead and get the heel spurs flipped out, which are exceptionally tight on this toy. All right, flipping out. There we go. That said, now here comes the fun part of this toy. So this is the section everything gets wrong on the instructions. You absolutely have to get this right or else this toy is going to look really strange. So to get it transformed correctly, this piece has to go all the way up and you're aiming to interlock it with the front face. These sections here, these spikes on the gold, need to kind of tuck into the top of this section in order to uh, transform everything right. But though everything else has to be flattened up, so mouth closed, horn down in front, that has to all tuck into here. And to do this, to get all this accomplished, you kind of have to uh, put everything a lot higher than the instructions say. See, that looks about where it's supposed to be. So with all that done, you can fold it down, and if you got it right, the frill should touch the red section of his chest and fit rather flush to create the actual uh, robot mode chest. There shouldn't be a gap left over, essentially. So that's how it is. And if you got it in the right spot, you'll find that when you hinge this up, it snaps right into place. You don't have to fiddle with anything. It's exactly where it's supposed to go. So that's great. That's how you tell. That's how you do it. I'm going to go ahead and rotate these up just so we have a little bit more thigh detail. This is the part I'm probably getting wrong because these can go up or down depending on how uh, you like it. There's, I kind of like it looking up just so we can fill out the black a little bit. So it may be wrong, but I'm going by personal preference here. Press these forward. With that out of the way, we can get the hands flipped out. And that's going to be our robot mode transformation. We can open up the hands while we're at it just to make sure he has the appropriate look to him. So, big, stumpy looking robot. Big and heavy set. Well, he is a Dinobot, so really, what all do you expect? Yeah, coming up a little bit on the shorter side, he's a very, very stocky guy. Very wide set, heavy chest. It's an interesting little balance, because Swoop ends up being very svelte, very thin, and Grimlock, of course, ends up being the uh, more normal of the uh, proportions. So he creates a very nice balance between the three. It's actually very nicely done. So, to the robot mode head. He's got little elements of the G1 character, but then again, the horn's definitely not of G1 Slag or Snarl. It's kind of a funny little thing they did. So, giant horn out the side, little horns on the side. Strangely enough, uh, it does kind of have those traditional G1 stylings. I remember a lot of horns on G1 toys, just not up front like that. But still, it's animated. They're supposed to be a little bit more characterful. I think that... I think this accomplishes it pretty nicely. I like how his expression is just like, ugh, it's Monday, isn't it? He's got very much a Garfield outlook on life. Also, while we're here, I'll go ahead and point out that the entire back of his head, done up in translucent orange for light piping, and then they painted over the eyes. Genius. Also, how many people actually want to bet on how many I... How many uh, already commented on forgetting to split the tail on the back? I just wanted to see how many people would jump the gun and jump to the comments. Because it's fun sometimes. You know, 
arbitrarily messing with fans, but hey, I have to amuse myself somehow. So hey, look, we've got a very nice looking robot mode all together. He comes up looking pretty clean all the way around. Pretty solid button, you'd expect that as much. I do like the split tail in the rear because that is something from G1 Snarl. It's a nice little homage thing, even if it's only by name and even if it's only incidental, it still gives you a little bit of the original Snarl that design, even though this is supposed to be slag. And as we said, yeah, he comes up very heavy set, very much, uh, very much a power lifter type of body going on. Uh, Detail-wise, he's mostly just using the stuff he had from Beast Mode. Now the backs. Now, now, now that we have uh, all this red compiled together, he does come up very heavily dominated by the red, with all of the gray left to the limbs, and for the most part, that works out really well. He just doesn't have a whole lot else going on. That black hands and some of the details in the chest are pretty much the only thing left that wasn't visible in the Beast Mode. I do like how much his head folds and flattens together. It's a lot of transformation just to get that head flattened up. And considering I've gone through things like Beast Wars Dinobot and Cheetor, where even the masterpiece Cheetor couldn't figure out how to flatten the cheetah head and had to go with like a fake head, this is a reminder that it can be possible sometimes. <laughs> it looks a little bit silly, but hey, they made it work. That's the important thing. So yeah, there's not a whole lot of detailing to talk about on this toy. We can go straight to articulation if you want. Sure, let's go ahead and do that. Head rotates all the way around. It's on a swivel, not a ball joint, so that's about it. Shoulder articulation. This is interesting. So up and down shoulder is fine, but he can't move it outward. He has this hinge underneath the, L underneath the swivel joint, which makes it a little bit awkward to get him into some poses. With limited posability, he actually can accomplish. And then the elbow does, yeah, you can see the elbow does not have much of a bend at all. I do appreciate that faux stretching detail. Anytime that's present to keep it looking from like a looking like a floating hinge on the arm, that's always appreciated. It's this extra touch of detail that keeps him from looking strange. Uh, let's see. Uh, the waist does not really have anything. The hips are nice and tight and universally jointed, so that's nice to have. And the knees actually have a decent bend to them, which is also good. I'm looking around, double checking, nothing has a rotation. Not the biceps, not the hips, nothing. And throughout everything, you're going to have trouble with his butt opening up all the time. It's like a Unicron maw. Om, 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 om. Make your own joke there. So we do, we do have a little bit more we can do. On the back of his shoulder armor, he does have these little buttons. And again, that's where the only real heavy molding is done. This kind of clockwork detail, which I actually think is really cool. It's best it is left on the inside, though, because it's not animated aesthetic. It's just a fun thing the designers did. But those little buttons, when hit, will actually... Pop out little flame details on his shoulders, making him a fiery Dinobot. Though it's a little bit strange, isn't it? It, it doesn't really accomplish a whole lot. The effect is barely visible now that I think of it. It's a little bit underwhelming, unfortunately. But hey, he does have an accessory weapon, the accessory weapon. So let's go ahead and show... Yeah. I'm, I'm sorry, this is, this is uh, not an accessory, this is a Cheeto. So let's uh, let's go ahead and put the Cheeto in his hand. Um, so yeah, if you look at the production art on this guy, or the production photos, like the actual like samples of what this guy was supposed to look like, you will find that this thing was supposed to be painted over. If you look, you can actually see a lot of raised detail in the sculpting all the way over. The effect was supposed to be similar to Grimlock's sword, where you're going to have appear the appearance of like hardened magma that was still red hot in the core, but solid on the outside, which would make sense for a club. But that got budgeted out, so he does have uh, this unfortunate thing of just holding a stick of lava as a weapon. And while it's kind of cool, it's also uh, kind of silly. This is something that would have been cool if it would have fit in the mouth, if like there was a groove on the tip of it. 
where it could have fit inside and locked to his mouth to make it look like he's breathing fire. That's not an option. Which is unfortunate. So, that's really all we have to animated Snarl. He's an okay toy, but animated did so well just creating these really cool and intricate figures with really intuitive transformations and really good looking stuff that he does come up very underwhelming for the toy line. The transformation is fine until you get to the head. It'd help if the instructions correctly detailed how to do it, but you kind of left it, it left it to figure out for yourself and it just, yeah, it's a messy transformation that I'm not accustomed to for animated. Uh, compile that with a substandard gimmick, some low articulation and an incomplete accessory weapon. And unfortunately, you've got a toy that I can understand why it shelf warmed in the UK. He's okay, but he is certainly not up to the high standards that animated set.